magician. So, you're a magician. We're here. We got Raw McGraw McGrizzly in the house. Frank McGraw. Yeah. What's going on, bro? Joe's back from the gym. Having a coffee. Might have a smoke. There you what go. There. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys up to? Uh, I also just got back from the gym, which you know because we saw each other there. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just had a nice massage, man. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Nice. What kind of massage? Like a like. A, did, you, did you get a happy ending? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. not today. No, 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 rub, no rub and tug. No, we just just did the uh, the the lower body, but oh, you know, the belt line or <laughs> yeah, from the kneecaps down. Just to, just worked oh. work around just worked around the penis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just the mid thigh, mid thigh and below. Yeah, dude. You know what? I never do. I never get leg massages ever. I only I only get my upper body done. Yeah, because I I have no issues with my legs or my lower body, and I so I and I just foam roll them a lot. So yeah. that that seems to do it do it for me. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I go. I'm at a point in my life where I need massage just to get through the day. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's probably common for me and Robin down. The but road. you know what though? Yeah. I never got a massage until I was uh, thirty two years old. First time I ever had a massage, like a like a real massage, like a for bodybuilders and i did because i didn't know i was like i didn't know you need to do that shit but as soon as i got in my uh my car accident the only way i could recover really is to go get like i heard about this guy from uh fuad and i went and got saw him and i remember fuad was in the room and uh i was waiting and all you hear was fuck cocksucker fuck and i was like what the fuck am i doing here what am i i was like i didn't just sign up for this shit and anyway it wasn't and then you know what when i got the massage i had this thing Back then, where it's like, I don't care how hard this guy goes, I'm not making a fucking sound. And yeah. I just go, yeah. <laughs> that was it. So that's my story. That's the best way to, to get the most out of those is to just not, because if you're there like screaming and shit, then your massage therapist is probably going to like alter what they're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just sorry, like, sorry for what I just told everybody you're a bitch. So. <laughs> Oh, We're friends, so it's okay. <laughs> no, but he was in screaming his head off. It was, I was like, oh my God. Oh, oh yeah. That's you know funny. how they are. They can be fucking, especially, oh. well, the good thing you don't get the legs in. The legs is the most painful. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That's why I foam roll them a lot. So I don't got to do that shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But we were in Dubai, man. <clears throat> I don't know what they were doing to either Quentin or Hassan, but we were in Dubai when we were all getting the massages done. But I heard, from the other room, I just heard someone like screaming, <laughs> and oh I was like, "Who God. the fuck is that?" I was like, "Is that Quentin? Is that Hassan?" Like, <laughs> they're really, they're really going in deep on those guys, man. Fuck, like I heard them like hollering. Whatever like, gets you through it, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, what the fuck's going oh. on there? But, <laughs> Shit, dude. I, I mean, even like, I don't know. I feel like that's too intense. But even for me, I told them to uh, to take it easy. I'm like, yeah, I'm competing in a couple of days. Take it easy. Oh, I was yeah, fucking, yeah, dude, sure. I was black and blue afterwards. Yeah. I'm like, yo, <laughs> luckily it went away before the show, but I, I had like some like serious, cause they did some of the gua sha. They did like, I don't even know. I don't remember what they were doing. I was like falling asleep, but I woke up. I'm like, it felt good. But when I woke up, I looked all over my shoulders and my back, like black and blue. Yeah. yeah it was smart for you to tell them that too, because, uh, I did, um, I think it was a two, the last time I did Toronto pro, um, I had like a, I did a bad shot in my shoulder. And I went to go get a massage and the guy really like killed it. And my whole arm was swollen. There was no veins in my arm or nothing. And by the, even by the time I got on stage, it was still there a little bit. It wasn't all gone away. So, so it's a good idea you do that. What happened to me too, man. Like that, that one shot that kind of just doesn't sit right. And then it's always close to a show too. I find that it, yeah. it happens. Yeah. Same with me though. Like shoulder went down the arm. Yeah, it's all that. Yeah. I hate that. It like blurred um, like your shoulder definition. Yeah, like my one arm was like like one arm was shredded, the other arm was like soft. That's yeah. what I was, I was so upset because that was the arm that I would pose for my side tricep. I'd be showing that one. And I did a photo shoot like the day before the show or two days before. And I was just like, I can see it. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm just like, I can see the it's just blurred. I'm like yeah. Uh, Robin, okay. Robin, how do you uh, just because like you've been very, uh, very successful lately? All your, your career lately, like things are really happening for you right now. How do you feel about it? Man? I must feel fucking good, man. Feels good, you know, like <laughs> like you're placing at big shows with, with big competition and like yeah. 
you know what I mean? Like, and I, I'm sure like a lot, I, I don't know, like your whole story and stuff like that. But like, I'm sure some people like, oh, yeah, whatever you compete to do, all right. And then you fuck with in there and kick that ass. That feels fucking good, eh? Yeah. It's oh, crazy, man. you know, like I, I'm sure you felt the same way. It's like yeah. when you're when you're in it, you get like a third or a fourth and like you feel pretty good about that. But then you're that close. So you want more. You want that second. You want that first more than anything. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it's humbling, too, because, you know, that you could be last place with how good guys are these days. Yeah. So to be in a call out, you know, it's it's fun. First of all, like it feels good because yeah. you're getting chosen. And then, you know, it's like validation man it's like you you worked for that time on stage so when you get that validation that extra time on stage it means a lot because you fucking trained a whole year trained 10 years for this one fucking show essentially and like right? i said and i think i don't so, know everything about that you're doing but like i obviously watch i follow you on instagram i watch you every day in the gym i can see how much i see you're putting into it and i know that you're going above and beyond the things you can do to make yourself the best you know you can be and i'm like it's actually motivating for me too, man. When I see all you guys still doing that stuff, not that I'm competing, but it just makes me go like, fuck, I need to do more, man. Fucking got these guys that get in the fucking huge and placing and doing everything we can to be better. And I tell you the guys, it fucking motivates me too, even though I don't compete. So I, uh, I'm watching you guys. I see it. Yeah. We all motivate each other. I think because like, again, like we're, we're in a pretty close knit kind of niche sport. Like we all know each other. We know the other guys competing. We know the guys that have been around, like the legends, like yourself, Frank, and the other guys that are, they're still in the game, but they don't compete anymore. But we see yeah. them, and that's who we looked up to when we were getting yeah. into it. Now yeah. we're kind of in your shoes now. We're in our prime. We're like the guys that people are kind of working towards now, which is a cool feeling because you yeah. you get recognition. People come up to you, and they want to take pictures, and they ask you if you're a pro, and they want to know what you're doing, and especially when you go to a new gym and you know you surprise people. So that's cool. Well, you, that's you guys are doing it, right? And we have a different, we have a cool dynamic where we've got all the pros kind of like at pure muscle. Mm -hmm. So when we go there, it's like the norm. Like you just expect like a lot of big ass dudes, a lot of like heavy weight to be, you know, hardcore training, like all that stuff. You expect that. So when you're walking into pure, it's a different feeling because you're you're walking in amongst your peers. Yeah. But then when you go outside and you go to maybe a new gym, you're like, you're the freak, you're the mutant, you're the guy that stands out, right? And it's like, yeah. that's kind of cool sometimes because you don't realize what you've done until you've taken yourself out of there, yeah. out of that normal environment and you put yourself where normal people actually are. And then you're like, whoa, I'm different than these people. I don't quite fit any <laughs> fit in like I used to. <laughs> you're 100% you're right because I think we, not, not that we take it for granted, but like you're just so used to seeing, you know, pros every day in the gym. Like when I go to gym, like, I'm still, not, I'm still like 235. I'm not like tiny or anything. I still work out and stuff like that. But then I see you guys, I'm like, fuck, I feel fucking skinny and whatever. But I got to realize I'm also standing around with some of the best bodybuilders in the world that are at the very top of this game. And, uh, you know, you, like you said, you go around regular, if I'm around regular people, people think I'm huge right now. Or if I go to grocery store or whatever. And so it's like, then I remember, okay, I'm not normal, I guess. But like when I go to the gym, I feel like I feel really normal next to you guys because you guys are. Both of these guys are fucking massive. If you guys have never met these guys in person, they're fucking huge. Um, so um, it's just now I, that's what I see every day. So that's like I I am I'm, I'm the kind of person that I always compares myself to the best that I see the people in the gym or online or whatever. That's what, I, I know we should never compare ourselves, but I know it's a hard thing not to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. it's a I, I feel you on that one, man. But it's like I'm so used to seeing everybody in the gym. There's always someone ripped. There's always someone competing. There's always someone huge or something. Even chicks. It's like, man, holy shit, that girl's like fucking shredded. Holy shit. And it just makes me go, I need to fucking up my game, man. I don't care yeah. fucking how how retired I am. I, ca I can't fucking like let it go, man, all the way. Yeah. I don't know how anyone does that. I don't know anybody that retires. I understand that we you downsize and all that kind of stuff like that. But like, how do you stop working out? Fuck, never, man. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can't imagine that. But I think, I think that's why I actually just saw a Branch Warren post and he had like an awesome caption. And it was basically like, we are bodybuilders because we love to train. Whereas there's people who are bodybuilders because like they just wanted to be bodybuilders. Or no, they train because they want to be bodybuilders. Whereas we are bodybuilders because we love to train. You know what I mean? Like the training I've, became way before the bodybuilding. You know? I've always said that, dude. I've never, I, I do, I do. And I can't say I don't love bodybuilding, but I love training. Training is what I love. And bodybuilding just happened to become like a, the competing side just happened kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I enjoyed it. Like, trust me, I, I'd love to get back on stage. And I enjoyed everything that I did. 
But at the end of the day, I was like, I just love the train, man. It's, that's yeah, that's I think it. Like competing is just like the cherry on top, right? Because we all do this to like, uh, like you know, you want to see what your best self is and your best physical self is going to be like most amount of muscle you can have while being as shredded as you can. And like yeah. this stage is just where we get to like display that. Like, you know what I mean? But we, I mean, we love the work, like being in the trenches, like that's, you got to love that. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? And that's, yeah. and that's what creates a true champion. That's what's going to allow you to be successful. Like if you love the process, you're going to be much more successful than someone who is, you know, fighting and clawing and like miserable through the process just to get to the stage. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? And I think, I think that's the issue with a lot of people today is that people just see, you know, all the glam and the fucking reward of being on stage. Like so many people go to a show and they see us up there, tanned up, shredded, like posing, having a sick time. And they're like, I want to do that. Right. And, and you it's like, you sure? that's not you what sure? you're signing up for. Yeah. That's not what you're signing up for. That's man. that's this much of it. Oh my God. You know I mean? They don't see the 16 weeks before that. We're like the 16 weeks. How about the 16 years? Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I mean? it's, most it's, people uh, will do something for, for a few months or a year. Ah, I didn't make it, man. I tried, you know. Ah. Dude, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah, you get so many people that just come into this with the wrong mindset. How long is it gonna take? That's the question. How long is it gonna How take? How long? To well, then the next question to you, both of you guys. Yeah. How long did you guys train from day one to the day that there was like a positive like uh outcome from doing all this stuff you know what i mean like I, i'm just saying like winning a show or making money or doing stuff like that or, or having some kind of like being known for being a bodybuilder or whatever how long did it take you from like i don't know how old you were when you started i was 14 years old when i started and i didn't i could be i my first show when i was 22 so that's eight years of training right there before i even saw a stage and then before i made any money was when i was 26 the first time i ever made money from bodybuilding so that's uh 12 years of training before I made a cent. How many people will do that right now? Yeah. Nobody. You know what I mean? Nobody. So same as you guys. Well, how long did it take before you like got those things, I guess? I mean, whatever. Uh and when's it for me? Like I, I started competing in 2013. I, I trained weights probably started in 2010, but I didn't really get consistent until 2012. Right. But like when I got into it, I was like into it. And then that's where the competing came from because I was in sports my whole life. And I was like, I gotta compete in something. And, like, I mean, you know what it's like, Frank, back in Newfoundland, 2013, like, bodybuilding wasn't cool, you know? So I'm going around telling people I'm doing a bodybuilding show. Everyone's, like, laughing at me and shit, right? Yeah. So I did my first show in 2013, and I won my first show in 2021. <laughs> and that's the same year I turned pro. <laughs> yeah, wow. It all happened at once for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, but... It and then I got, I got a contract after that, making a bit of money and, and stuff like that. So, like, 10 years, at least 10 years. Yeah. Before you saw... Well, like eight, 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 eight year, eight, nine years, I would say, yeah. 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 Before you saw fucking some kind of benefit besides just fucking liking it. <laughs> just doing you know it. What I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, doing it doing open, this, open one day. It's costing you money. This costs me more money. I'm broke and I'm doing this. Yeah. Why the fuck am I doing this, right? Oh, well, it's, it's about... still it still costs way more money. Oh yeah. Than, than it's more. It's it's almost always gonna be like that unless you're winning pro shows consistently or top five at the yeah. Olympia. Yeah. It's like, but the good thing about it, because it costs so much to do, it forces you to, to be a more successful, to make us be more successful and make more money. Exactly. Like you're, you're, if you're a bodybuilder who like, and you want it, and you're trying to compete at a high level, like you're gonna make money, or otherwise you're not gonna be able to do it. So yeah. Yeah. that's how it is, right? Yeah, and and that's the good thing about bodybuilding these days is that well, everybody wants to be a bodybuilder, everybody wants to have a coach, and everybody wants to get there as fast as possible. So for for us. You know, we 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 tried to get there as fast as possible, obviously. It still took us 10, 8, 10 years, right? Same with me. Like, I started, you know, first show, 2010, turned pro, uh, 2018. Eight yeah. years consistently, right? Um, and, you know, it still didn't really pay off because no nobody came knocking. Nobody was calling me, being like, hey, Robin, I got some money for you. None of that happened. <laughs> Okay. But what I did, what I did do was I went home and, you know, I changed my bio and all that stuff with the idea of now I'm going to use this to set myself up a business. And that's yeah. when I decided, okay, I'm a pro now. Let's make some money off this. Yeah. So I decided, okay, I'm going to start my online coaching business and I had no clients. So, okay, I got some buddies, start helping people for free. Okay. First client now, official new client, hundred bucks, you know? 
second client, 150 bucks, whatever. And you just start taking people on. Eventually, you know, you start working your way up. And I got to the point where I could quit my other jobs and just do that, training people. And still, like you said, Morgan, it's like you only want to do that stuff to make more money because it feeds into what you love to do. Mm -hmm. So if there wasn't that love and that passion for the sport, you wouldn't have that same motivation to work so hard to make the money. You, you would focus on something else. Absolutely. Your money would be allocated for other That's, You talk about most of the population. Yeah, you know, exactly. Because they never found their passion. You know what I mean? And they never got to. So if you don't find your passion, how, you can't make your passion your career. And that's where the excuses come in, right? Yeah. Oh, I, I can't because I have this job or I have this lack of time or I have the lack of money or I ha whatever you think you're lacking. That's your excuse. Yeah. And you know what? How many times you guys hear this too? Like I've heard this fucking, I don't know how many times in my life I've heard this. Oh, if I had a contract that made money from bodybuilding, I could make it too. I was like, then I, I just can't like, I, sometimes I don't say anything. And then sometimes I go, exactly what we're just talking about right now. I was like, do you know I made it here without being paid? Like yeah. that, that's what you don't understand. I didn't just get money and all of a sudden turn pro. I had to work to do all these shows and win a show, win this show, get recognized, get a contract. You know what I mean? Like turn pro and spend all that money on everything. You know what I mean? Um, sacrifice fucking birthdays and you know all the all the fucking shit. Girlfriends, everything. You sacrifice it all, and you think that I'm just like it just fell in my lap. You think that it just I got you know. I I mean, like, trust me. Like when even when thing happened to me with you know being sponsored by a big company, maybe some luck, maybe a little bit. I don't know. You know what I mean? But I don't want I, I don't want to say it too much because I'm like I'm I don't want to downplay on my own self. You know what I mean? What I've done, but like yeah. Um, yeah, I hate I hate hearing that. Like, oh yeah, if I if I had took what you took, or if I did had didn't have the work, I'd have that. I was like, dude, I was a bouncer, fucking yeah, before I turned pro, trying to make it, fucking spend every fucking cent trying to fucking yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what I was just thinking. Like, you're just every 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 dollar you make, like you know what it's going towards. And oh, like, dude, I literally this... remember, like, I, like yeah. I remember, like I remember waiting to get paid so I could go buy food. So I could go buy like, you know, my drugs, whatever I need it. Like I had to wait for a paycheck. Like oh, it's this... crazy for me to think that I was in that position. And I was just like happy to be doing what I was doing. You know yeah, what I mean? This, if yeah, I was living I, like I would... that right now, I'd be stressed yeah. the fuck out. <laughs> Dude, I'd be like fighting yeah. to get like one bottle of test and like uh yeah. some like, like in my first show was like I did three bottles of test and one bottle of windstroke. And I had to claw just every bit of money I had to scrape together to get it. Cause you know, in Newfoundland. You had to pay a lot of money to get something good. I don't know about how it was for you, but was... yeah, in my early days, 120 bucks for a violet. Oh, tech, shit like oh that. yeah, same thing. Getting so anyway, I I got I'd get the bare minimum what I could get to do a show and still win. And I was I you know now I look back and go, I, I must have just wanted it more than these other guys because I know guys were taking more than me. And I'm like, and I didn't know any more than these guys know. I'm not more talented than you are. I mean, I, yeah, I, I think I had some decent genetics. But I was like, man, I really think that because my whole life I was never good at something. This is the one thing that I fucking like really shined at right away. Yeah. Even when I was a like, young guy, like 14, 15, I just passed everybody really fast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like nickel and diamond, the gear and stuff and still making it and stuff. Even when I turned pro, like I did the same cycle when I turned pro. <laughs> oh, I added in clank. Sorry, I added in clank. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> right? But like just just barely making it to the show with the money you got and you know what I mean? It's like fucking get a hotel room and trying to fucking pay for the meals and you know, and you're like, you're like you don't know what's gonna happen and fucking Yeah. It worked out, but fucking I, I, for a lot of people, man, that's like they, they don't it doesn't go that way. I know it does, yeah. Nope. I think but what what I'll say about like, you know, the three people that are talking right now, three of us, is that None of us had a plan B. And I think oh, that no. that's the key. It was like it was like this or nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's and that's what it takes to make it in anything like like this. Like you know what I mean? You can't be because if there's if you have that backup plan, as soon as shit gets hard, you're gonna fall on that backup plan. But when shit got hard for us, it was just like, oh well, I gotta work around this. I gotta work through this. I gotta find a way. And when you're that fucking determined, you'll you'll always find a way, right? Hard times always pass. Yeah. Right. You just gotta keep fighting. You know, well, yeah. just uh, I know all of us have uh, uh, even for us uh, every one of us have had an injury, like I know all you guys have had like a, like somewhat pretty serious injury. I guess serious. I don't know how to say serious, but muscle tears. Um, like that. Yeah, you know stuff that could end your career. It could. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So even like and still being able to keep going after that, that takes a lot, man. I know you guys all know how it feels. Yeah. That makes you want just want to like I did all this fucking work and I just got fucking hurt. 
and you just think it's over. It's fucking done. Like I, I, I mean, there was a time when I would think that like in my head, but I'm the kind of person I wake up the next day and go, fuck, you know what I'm going to do? I tore my triceps. So guess what I'm going to do? It's going to be fucking striated to fuck. Yeah. <laughs> whatever I, you know, yeah. whatever you got to do, right? I'm going to make my arms so big. Even when I tore my tricep, I measured it when I was on stage still. It was still 21 inches. Yeah. Because it was yeah. just, it just looked fucked up because where it was torn. But I still fucking, dude, I was still training like a fucking crazy person. Well, man, me, Robin, maybe some things I went down, I, I down the, the weight a little bit. I didn't bench as much anymore, but like, yeah, I still fucking train hard, you know, crazy hard. Yeah, I think with every injury like that, there comes you almost have this like sense of caution that that you carry with you since like after that point, like you know, because mm -hmm. you you learn from like an injury because you probably did something stupid to get it, you know what I mean? But but I know, I mean, me and Robin, we both had you know bicep injuries in the last year, and we both had days and weeks where we were in our head about it. You know what I mean? But then, like, that was my thing, too. It's like, okay, maybe my bicep's going to look a little fucked up, but I'm just going to make everything else so big and crazy looking that people don't even fucking pay attention to it. You know, exactly. you so know, all you can do. When I, did the, when I did the Olympia, and I was getting ready for it, I had two torn triceps, half my rear deltas torn off, half the shoulders torn off. Uh, you know, spleen, I'm not trying to cool or anything like that, but, like, my, my mindset was, if I'm like at a disadvantage now from everybody from like these injuries right what the fuck can i do i was like okay and i didn't have a lot of time either even when i worked with a, a honey rambot he's like you don't have enough time i was like well i want to try yeah <laughs> anyway um that's another story but um i just got fucking lean and shredded as i could possibly get in that amount of time and it was enough to like qualify for olympia and stuff like that with those injuries and i like dude when they called my name because that's when you get top three you could qualify right um and i remember i got third at tampa dude i fucking was gonna ball my eyes because that, that that might mean as well that i won the whole show because that meant i knew i was going to olympia yeah and the year before that i was in a fucking like fucked up like uh you know skinny from the accident and fucking thought my whole life was over and now i'm like i'm going to the fucking olympia like and i'm like with all these injuries like i honestly i don't sound gay but man i was so proud of myself man like fuck yeah. i was like holy fuck how did i fucking do this you know and that's that's, un, that's unreal man and that's what it is too because it's it's the adversity that you overcome that makes it so rewarding with without without having that serious of a setback that that feeling of going to the olympia wouldn't have been as intense you know yeah, so, but I, I probably wouldn't yeah. have got there because my body was uh more perfect before that but I, I don't think my mind was a right in the right place to be able to work that hard to get it yeah and it's not Rob, I know Robin, we both worked with um, Alvin Brown. Yeah. So I can tell you my little experience with him. A um, little shout out to Alvin here. Yeah, Alvin's um, awesome. When, so I went to go see him to get work done, like physically, right? Yeah. But, but I, I didn't know. He was when he was first starting his, um, the mental aspect of his training, whatever, right? Yeah. And uh, I think I think I was one of these like guinea pigs at the time, I think. but Because <laughs> he would talk to me this whole time. He would we're talking i was like i like this guy like he's fucking talks to me and and then there was a time i came in to get work done and we didn't do any physical work whatsoever and i was like what the fuck am i paying for if he's not and we did we did this stuff he was talking to me you know visualization uh just all this stuff you know what i mean i know you know exactly what i'm talking about yeah he even said to me at one point that me getting in my car accident was a good idea was a good thing and i looked at this, i didn't say anything but i was like this Guy's fucking nuts. I just paid for this guy to tell me that it was good that I got in a car accident. But it, I didn't I didn't get it until way later when um like saying like just because of the stuff I got over, I I thought I guarantee I wouldn't have done the Olympia if I didn't get in that car accident. Because I wouldn't have had the fucking, you know, the 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 want so bad to come back. You yeah, know what I mean? Fire. That's what it was, right? The fire that was in me, yeah. It was like that's what got me there, right? And that car accident sparked it. Well, it's because I knew you almost had everything taken away from you. Oh man, yeah. dude! Yeah. I tell you right now, I was two seventy. I got out of the hospital after a month. I was under two hundred pounds, like one eighty five. Holy shit! Yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm, I I fucking bawled my eyes out every day. Girlfriend just broke up with me, left me. Fucking fuck that dude. bitch! Not yeah. one. Of, I don't want to say anybody. No, no one came to see me. No one came to fucking visit me. And uh, it was it was it was it was a dark time, and in that hospital bed for a month straight, man, just fucking look at the ceiling, fucking brutal, man. Anyway, you know what though? I started in my head planning those, like thinking what, what you know. I don't know how why I was thinking about that. I was like, I'm gonna come back from this. Like one day is like, okay, I'm, I'm, I want to die. Next minute is like, okay, so what's the first thing I can do? 
Okay, now this stuff, my client is trained. Dude, the first thing I started doing was walking. <laughs> Just yeah. walking. Yeah. So yeah, but anyway, man, it's, it's fucked up, right? But uh it says a lot though, man. Like it's just like it's like you know, you, you, it's okay to have those moments where you feel bad for yourself, like you're human at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like going through bad stuff, it sucks, especially when you have plans, you're being successful, everything's good, and then boom, something happens and you get this massive setback you gotta deal with. But we've all dealt with them, and that's why we can all say like they make you fucking stronger, right? And yeah. they those setbacks make you appreciate what you have. And then the next time things are good in your life, you're like, you appreciate oh, it. You, you have gratitude, you know, yeah. you're like, man, thank God I'm back here. I'm back in a position where I can bodybuild again. I'm back in a mm -hmm. position where I can compete, make money from bodybuilding, all these things. Right. And then, and then going forward, who knows what having that gratitude could, could save you from if you didn't have it, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that maybe, and that's probably why Alvin told you the accident was a good thing for you because it just set your mind right, and then from there mm -hmm. you're fucking focused, right? Yeah. Well, you know what? Did it might have taken something away physically from me, but it added to this. I'll tell you right now, man. Big time. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Even like what I'm going through right now, uh, I could tell you, man. Like I've been in some of the worst spots in my life, even worse than my car accident. I've gone through that. I would never wish on anybody. The stuff I went through last year, but um, I'm telling you right now, when bad things happen to me now, I'm like. Man, so somebody else is like the whole world's over. I'm like, nah, it's nothing, man. You have no idea. That's a joke. <laughs> yeah. So when I hear people, and, and I, I don't like to be insensitive to some other people. I guess I have been too, because this is what I've been through. When I hear somebody complaining about something, that's like, to me, I'm like, fuck. I wish that's all I had to worry about. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like that. I, 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 but then I realize that there's people way worse than me. Like, because I, I go to, I still go to the hospital three times a week, and I see people like really sick, right? And I, and I'm like talking to the nurses i'm like they're wheeling people out to go home and i'm like yeah, i'm gonna go do legs now yeah you know so i'm like i, I tell myself there you know maybe maybe i do feel this way because i worked out and i kept working out and or whatever but whatever way i'm i'm just uh happy for the i feel good for the days i feel good Definitely. i still have my bad days and stuff like that and that's gonna happen but you know what I, every day i get up there's days i got actually the other day and i said to myself nothing was wrong you know when you, you get better from being sick you kind of forget about it and you just go on i woke up and went Man, it feels good not to feel like shit today. <laughs> yeah. and I, th I thank the universe. I was like, universe, thank you, man. I feel yeah. like I can do something today. I can get to the gym. I can do this. I can eat my meals. Yeah. And uh, like, I don't take it for granted like I used to. Like, even like for me, like being like traveling is really hard because I have to, so limited how long I can go. And I'm like, do you know how, how weird it is to be like, uh, like I feel like I have an anchor on me. Like I can't, I can't be free. And I tell people, I was like, man, people don't realize how free they are. Yeah, you guys can go yeah. anywhere you want. Like, but I'm not saying this in a bad way. Don't feel bad for me like that. But I was like, we don't, as people don't realize that. You no, know I mean? even as bodybuilders too. Like as bodybuilders, I feel like clearly like we were all meant to be bodybuilders because we've all gone this path to the max. And there's like no other path for us basically in this lifetime because we've, de we've dedicated and devoted everything to this. And it's all about the physical body, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like, you know, it's like, that's kind of like our curse, like our blessing. Like we all had the genetics, the discipline, whatever, whatever physical components we needed to be good bodybuilders, we have that. But then we also have that, that mental, it's like the prison-like effect that surrounds the body where it's like, if I have like an elbow pain today, that affects my mental state. If my knee hurts today, I'm thinking about that. So my, my, my body is like my prison for my mind. And there's a lot of people that, that live not with their body. Like they don't, they don't over consider their body to be that important. Like we do, we make yeah. it the most important priority of our entire lives. It's yeah. the, it's the most focus we put into out of anything in the daytime is what our body looks like, how it feels, how it performs how it's fueled all these things it's all consuming so i was wondering you know frank have you experienced anything like ego death or experimenting with psychedelics because we uh we watched the documentary that big three media laura did and uh it's on ayahuasca and um magic mushrooms and some other things too but i feel like that's probably something that we would learn is mm -hmm. how to free ourselves from this like bodily prison realizing that the body is just it's just a machine that drives us around right and we realize like 
it can fucking break. And if it breaks and we lose our body, then we still have ourselves. It just doesn't feel like that because it's like that's everything for us. If I, oh. if this bicep isn't perfect, like I'm not complete. I'm not perfect. But you have to realize that you're still complete. You're still perfect, even if you're fucked up and broken. I feel like that your that, soul's complete, right? But we yes. don't see that. We just see the fucking body. Trust me, I'm in I'm in the zone of my life right now where it's like, okay, I'm downsized. Um, you know, my body's not as perfect to use as it used to be. Obviously, you know, injuries and fucking I got tubes hanging at me. The struggle that I've gone through with that, what you just said, is it's still going on. I'm getting better at it. Yeah. Um, but dude, I'm telling you, that is a hard fucking battle, man. And I don't, I I don't know how you got. Some people, you know, people you talk to guys like, what are you gonna do when you retire? Oh, what they go? Oh, I'm gonna lose fifty pounds and I'm just gonna whatever. I'm like, or I'll be fat and happy. I was like, eh, not many. I, I know some guys they can do that, but I, I for most of us, you don't know what that feels like. Mm-hmm. You think you think you can, but the, the, why do you think you get a lot of guys, older guys that can't let go and they just keep going and. You know, and something bad happens because they can't because there's because like you said they're locked in this thing they can't let it go. I'm I'm not even gonna lie. I'm fucking fighting with it myself. I'm like part of me wants to just fucking go nuts and fucking get huge and you know take more gear, eat more food, and train harder. And you know what I mean. Just I miss that like that crit. You know where you guys are right now. I miss that stage. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, it's, addicting, it's, it's, man. it's very it, addicting. It really, well, dude, you feel like, like, honestly, before I ever got injured, you know, when you have that, uh, you can do anything. I mean, I'm invincible. Like, I'm not afraid oh, yeah. to do anything in the gym. Oh, yeah. Like, to put anything, you like, I remember that I, I'm now I am, and I don't like it. I don't like going to the gym and going, ooh, I see someone else lifting something heavy. I'm like, oh, jeez, I can't look. Even though I've never <laughs> really got hurt, I never really got hurt that way. But, um, I just remember, like, I, I, I wouldn't, you know, you, when you go to the gym, you just throw on fucking four plates on fucking bench or something, and just, Eh, whatever now it's like that's scary to me yeah. i hate it i fucking hate it you know what i mean um but i'm saying like what you said what you just said is what i'm going through right now and i'm telling you it's a battle man i'm gonna say it's not because it's definitely not easy yeah. but i'm like just part of me even goes to myself like i've been through a fucking lot and i still go man you know what i had a good workout today i felt like i looked pretty decent i was like grateful for that i was grateful to have that you know what i mean but trust me it's still very hard to let go of the the, like where you guys are at it's a hard thing to let go of and just like start to be like you think you're like normal i think i'm like a normal guy walking around it's like fuck because i know what it's i guess it's our ego a little bit too but like i know how it is like I, anywhere anywhere i'd go it's just like fuck holy shit oh man you know people freaking out and stuff like that and and now if i if i got a hoodie on a sweater and i you know what he knows thing about me people just like ah just another guy in the crowd it's like oh fuck that's weird man you know yeah, yeah. now show him a little four on then we're okay <laughs> tank top tank top and shorts you got the, the right? forearms the calves here it's all good <laughs> yeah. yeah but it's it's not easy man it's a tough fucking thing man yeah. i don't do exactly yeah. what you said yeah and it's like i want i want to learn how to be 100 percent happy if i lost like all my muscle like you know what i mean as a, like it looked like a bodybuilder at all how because it brings us joy too like i don't know about you guys but being in shape and working out and all stuff makes me happy so what do you do if that's taken away from you Oh, yeah. So I those think, times, the times I was in the hospital, that was gone. So I got to like, fuck, what do I do? Yeah. Yep. I think for me, like if, if it gets to a point where I like, when it gets to the point where I can no longer like progress my physique, I think I'm going to have to like shift to like something else, like, you know, something else. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what? I think about martial arts all the time because I have a lot of experience with it when I was younger. And I think for me, like when I can't bodybuild, I'll still like, obviously try to have a good physique. I'll still train, but the fact of like not being able to progress is what kills me. It's like, I, I need to get up every day and work to be better at something. Like, you know what I mean? And for me, like just to be like, Oh, I'll just focus on business and stuff like that. That's not really enough for me. Like I need a physical pursuit. Like I need, I I love feeling exhausted. Like I love like after the gym, like after leg day, just knowing I just killed myself and I got nothing left to give. And I'm like, I I can barely make it to my truck. Like, like that's the best feeling in the world to me. Like, you know what I mean? So I feel like that, that's what I want like to maintain my sanity. That's what I feel like I'm going to have. You know, one thing is, you know, one thing is, um, one thing I don't like, and it's not, I'm not trying to talk bad about anybody. I won't say anybody's name or anything like that. But when people go to me, like, and say, if I'm going through a really bad time and, or, you know, when the kidney thing happens like that, people go, 
where I'll be like, oh, my, my knees are hurting so bad. I can't train legs as heavy as I used to. It fucking sucks. You know what I mean? Whatever reason it is. They're like, uh, why don't you just do something else? Why don't you do something else? I'm like, what do you mean do something else? You know, basically, and then, you know, I just, I fucking hate hearing that, man. I'm like, oh, why, you, why train legs? You don't compete no more. Just fucking do, just do arms, man. And I'm like, the fuck? Yeah, no, not you're cut from. Yeah, you know, you're not cut from that cloth. But like you said, same thing as you. Like I got this competitive side to me. Like even if I like see you guys, and I know you guys are bigger and stronger and whatever like that, but I'll still fucking kill myself to like, like today, like someone come to me and said, "Man, holy fuck, look like you're gaining weight." And I was like, "Oh, thanks, man." Like that made me feel like fucking okay. I'm doing something right. Yeah. But I'll I'll do something like I, whatever. Like even now, I'm start doing like a lot of forearms because I'm like okay. I probably won't be able to be 280 ever again, but I, maybe I can make my forearms like fucking 20 inches. <laughs> There's always ways to progress, man. There's always, right? yeah. or yeah. like you said about the martial arts stuff, like I'm, uh, I'm really going to start doing boxing. I did, uh, I put on my Instagram the other day. I just did like, I was at a, a store event, just threw a guy through the pads on. I was hitting a little bit. I was like, cause I always love boxing. And I was like, I just love the discipline of it. And I just think it's, I just love it. Right. And uh, never done it before. And I was actually felt pretty comfortable just hitting the pads a little bit. And I told the guy, I'm going to join. I'm going to, I really want to go and see how good I can. Not that I want to fight, but I like learning how to fight. Oh, and for sure. At, and be good at it, right? It's a skill, it's, man. It's a skill, 100%. It's, it's, it's like bodybuilding, too. I feel like it's fighting and boxing, martial arts. It's one of those things that, like, there is no limit of, like, how good you can be. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's. I just, I just always want to do something skill. physical. I just hate when people go, oh, you own a company now, so you don't have to fucking be the face. You don't have to be an athlete. I'm like, I'm always going to fucking try to be an athlete, man, or be that guy because I, I just that's just me you know what i mean that's i can't fucking change that man yeah it's it's in there you can't get it out it's important so, to have that balance like like you guys said it's like just being being physically exhausted being able to push yourself so, so it has to be something that you're motivated to do though right because yeah. if like if someone's like hey man sorry to hear that you can't do bodybuilding anymore why don't you go do like you know go do some running it's like that's that's so different it's <laughs> i get it it's like yeah it's going to be exhausting but i'm not going to be motivated to run like i'm mm -hmm. not going to be able to, especially if i just all of a sudden okay 300 pounds can't lift anymore now i'm just gonna go right into running it's gonna be so horrible yeah yeah but i mean i guess that would be like a way to progress it's like hey fuck i'd probably run for five minutes and and die and then mm -hmm. the next day 10 minutes and then 15 yeah, yeah. minutes it's like if that's all you had you would just you would just focus on that trying to progress right because that's what we do if we have an injury if we have something that we don't have control over we just look back and okay well what do we have control over let's focus on those things let's get those things better i know for yeah. me man if i was gonna go and start doing a sport it would be like getting back into paintball because that would be something that i would i would love to get better at and the only it would be a motivational Thing because the only way to get better would be to get also get smaller. What do you think? What's the target. heaviest you can be and be a good paintball player? Do you think? Like I was like 150 pounds when I was playing paintball. Those guys are pretty yeah. small. Yeah, and and some of the guys on my team were like like a snake player, like a front player, or like an agile player. Like they're like five foot nothing, you know, and they're like 120 pounds because they just need to be short and fast. So that they're when they're running in the front of the field, they're not getting hit by the the paint, right? If you're a taller, wider guy, like you're going to be like a back player. Um, but even then, like you still have to be able to <laughs> fit behind the bunkers, right? Like if you're wider <laughs> than the bunker, like good fucking luck, man. You know, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> I just imagine you hiding behind a bunker where your shoulders is getting hit. <laughs> exactly, it's it's terrible. Yeah. So, but I mean. That would be fun. Like, you know, I, I always love to play paintball and definitely uh, you play like a fucking tournament or a couple of matches of paintball, you'll be exhausted. You'd Hell be so yeah. fucking tired. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Want to get in some questions? Yeah. What do you got? Well, I have a, few, I have a couple. Um, yeah. To Frank, who, who was like, you know, in your opinion and for you, like who was the coolest person that you ever got the opportunity to train with whether that was like one time or like a long-term training partner hmm oh, look, that's a that's a big question i think one of the coolest people i trained with and not just not because he's who he is but it's just because we became good friends 
It was a uh, Flex Lewis. Yeah. Um, that was um a, a hard time in my life and a good time in my life. I just me and my me and my wife just got a divorce, and I was helping Flex uh train for the Olympia. I moved into a motel next to the gym, so I could be right next to the gym. Dude, I didn't miss one workout. I didn't fuck or whatever. And we just like just became you know fucking buddies, right? He would shut the whole gym down. It would just be me and him, and nobody. Everybody else had to get up, and we trained for like it was fucking. I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot, you know. what I mean, and uh, mentally and fucking, you know, in the gym stuff too. So, so I, it's funny. I I, I talked to Frank about. The, I talked Frank. Talked to Flex about this uh, mm -hmm. when I was in New Brunswick with him one time. And did did he have like certain rules? Like if you were late, if you were like a certain amount of minutes late, like you would not be let in the gym or. You'd have some kind of like punishment or something like that, or yeah. I try to I try to remember what it was now too, because um, yeah, you couldn't be late. But yeah. listen, he's gonna if he sees this, <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. Um, it'd be he'd fucking kill you if you're late. Like he'd fucking listen, but he would be late sometimes. Not yeah. way off, but he would be late, and yeah. it's like, oh man, you know, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just was okay then, right? yeah uh, but it's like you know what it's i understand he's he's the one getting ready for a show and he's the one that's going through all that stuff and you know he's got kids and family and blah, blah, blah. i'm like by myself living in a motel like i got no real excuse right i'm home yeah. watching fucking spongebob and fucking fucking eating the meal getting ready to come there and just me and abby in a fucking motel and uh <laughs> you know but it was funny man because it's like uh it was always this one-sided always it's like man you fuck you live five minutes down the street you can't make it on time and then he'd be late for some, you know, it's always some excuse. And I'm like, what am I going to say? It's his fucking gym. It's his fucking thing, right? Yeah. Well, I remember uh, that. That's that's when Dragon's Lair first opened. Oh, man. It was a, yeah. it was, it was a, there was people that trained there. Like, you'd have uh, personal trainers that would train, not a lot of people would train there, but like, um, you know, personal trainers would be in there and stuff like that. And they'd rent out, you know, the time to train there. But as soon as it, it was like the time for me and Flex, like at least two hours, he would close the gym. And you, the people knew to be like, do, do not knock on the door. Do not fucking come. Do not do not. If you open the door to like the part of the gym where it's like the all the equipment, and you could you could see it from where we were because it wasn't like the place wasn't huge. It was pretty decent yeah. size, but but if he saw that door open, he would fucking lose it. He's like because he would want we didn't want to be disturbed. But we're training, right? But he was serious about it, man. He was fucking serious about fucking training time. No distractions, no nothing. So yeah. you, people people would sometimes somebody would open the door and look in or something. Fuck, man. He'd be like, close the fucking door. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching those YouTube videos. Awesome. Like, oh, so dude. So yeah. we used to, like, it, dude, man, it was me, him, and the camera dude, the camera guy. That, that, those videos were hard, man. Because we, that was, and we weren't putting nothing on for the camera. That was every day like that. Every fucking oh. day, same shit. Yeah, what, what was cool about him was that, like, you guys weren't talking much. Like, no, 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 like, tutorials. Like, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. Like, it was just, like, the cameraman. No music, like you guys just fucking training. You know what's so funny about that too? It's like I was right, that's right before I got diagnosed with the kidney problems. I was already having problems like eating and all this kind of stuff. I don't know how I made it through that, man. I fucking I went in there and did everything he not he probably trained heavier a little bit more than me, but I did everything he did, I did it. I was just fucking so fucking you must look pretty crazy after that. Like yeah. if you well, I yeah, I, well, I wasn't like my best or anything, but like yeah. That's true. I got videos on my Instagram like where I'm like veins were fucking like stupid crazy um in, in Flex's gym towards the end of it. I got a couple of videos in there and like I was I was pretty shredded, dude. I was not eating like diet food. I was eating the regular Frank McGrath fucking Subway cookies and yeah. and I, but I was too I was fucking I got pretty I got veins in my stomach and it was crazy, man. Yeah. Just yeah. to train like that. So you've always just had like a freaky metabolism, hey? Like you've always been able to just get away with like pizza and fucking you know McDonald's and shit, and because you it it seems like you've been lean your whole career. Uh, well, what what people see the thing is, I I think I talked to some of those today too. People think you're leaner than you are because you have veins in your arms and stuff like that. Like that's just the way my I am. Like right now, like when I trained today, I had some like you know some veins going on and stuff like that. I always do. But like I can still have a little fat on my stomach and whatever. Like I just uh, it's just not that I'm not in shape, but I'm like I think they think it's leaner than what it is just because yeah. of the vascularity, right? Like but I dude, can be fat. When when you competed at some of those shows, I remember watching the videos with like you and Antoine and yeah. uh, Mike Johnson. 
like your skin on your face was like paper thin like the skin on your stomach was like non-existent man yeah that that's some crazy conditioning did you have to suffer at all for that you must have um, suffered like it probably felt like you were suffering but did you have to diet say, really hard or was that like just normal? Well, you know what i think it was like one of the first times i ever put a hundred percent into like a diet and not for, not for a very long time like i'm talking about like three months yeah because i work I, that's when i worked with honey and uh. um i didn't even do a lot of cardio like well it started off a little bit higher but he, I guess he's once he knew my body, he could say he was like, okay, I think because I think too he was trying to make me grow and and get lean at the same time because I we're, like we were behind, like I was small and out of shape, and um, like I didn't kill down the cardio. At one point, I think the highest we went was thirty five minutes five times a week. That was like it, Easy. and yeah. two cheat meals of cardio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two cheat. I had two cheat meals a week um but he said he goes so he wanted me to do legs twice a week so he wanted me to have a cheat meal every night before i did legs because that was my weaker body part yeah and uh so i'm like are you sure like and he was like i want you to have like a burger and fries a real coke and some kind of dessert like a cheesecake or a piece of cake or something like that it's like stuff like that. that's an example right and i was like you fucking serious <laughs> really and then, you know, I was like, okay, what are you saying, man? And I did that, like, with the training wise, like, he would tell me what to do. Like, he would, like, okay, do this, do this, do this. And the, and the gear was not nothing crazy. It was, I thought it was going to be like nuts or something. It wasn't. And uh, it just worked, man. I don't know. Like, just, just me putting that little bit of extra effort in, I was like, I was fucking shredded. Yeah. Uh, so that's yeah. another question I have here. Um, and I know this is kind of a dumb question, but I want you to answer because I know it's going to be a lot less than what people expect. And that is, uh, what was the craziest cycle that you've ever done? Oh, I did have a time I tried to do higher, higher one time. Um, I Bomber. think it was like, oh God, I'm trying to remember all what I took. So at one time, this guy tried, he wanted me to take um, 3,000 makes a test, <laughs> right? And... Um, so I don't know how much a week I was doing. Like, uh, so it was like a week, right? Um, I think the highest I ever went was like two. And I only did it for like a week or two or something like that. I mean, a couple of weeks. Because I was like, dude, I, I can't put that much stuff in my body. I, I've never was big on doing like big shots. I always thought like... It's you like a mile do... a week, man. Like that just... Yeah, that's a ton of tests. <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, you know, uh, we'll take Anabar and then... And, and, um, Winstrel tabs and injectable winstrel and fucking trend and you know it was all these things and I was like I got to the point I was telling this person I was like hey I tried a little bit of extra stuff and it's like I don't think it's gonna make me any better like I think like I had to stop but I only did it for like I'd say God uh, a month and I was like dude I can't I can't do this man like I got I'm sore all over it's make like I don't feel good like it's just it, you know I'm, I look pretty decent but I was like I and the thing is I tell them too like this is what I've done in the past. And like I haven't done any big cycles really ever. Like, dude, I turned pro on Winstrel and Test. That was it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I didn't. You know, I mean, this guy was trying to get me to do fucking this like smorgasbord of fucking shit. And uh, nah, man, it was it was too much. I mean, I looked good at the end of the day, but like, oh, you know, the thing was, um, that's those pictures of me when I was in um in Gold's gym, like the ones who stand there with the tank top on. I don't know if you guys might have seen that one. But then I looked sh like shit at the show, like total fucking shit. Um, the guy didn't know how to fill me up. I was a, like a pancake and like too much diuretics and stuff. Like just, and that was my last show too. So it was pretty disappointing, even though I placed okay, but it wasn't, no one oh, knew what I could have Oh, I think I know exactly who this is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you kind of work with like a, a smaller name coach for a bit. Yeah, and it was, I think that they just get lucky and they just throw a million drugs at you. I think I know you're talking about. You trained with him too, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, dangerous. I actually trainings. talked to him. I was actually going to work with him. And, uh, you know, he was going to charge me like 200 bucks for like a consultation. What? He's like, I'm going to charge you 200 bucks for a consultation just to see if you're worth my time. I'm like, if I pay you $200, I better be worth your fucking time. I didn't even, I'm like, I'm like, no, I didn't even bother. Yeah. Like, really, for to you, charge for that you. much for a consultation. Like, first time I ever talked to a client, you're getting a free consultation. I mean, it's just. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a, you know bad, I mean? not, that's a bad business, man. Like, oh, no, like, sorry. I got to charge you just to see if you're worth my time. It's like, I was like, never mind. Like, 
That's that's. I guess, I guess I'll I guess I'll have to ask Frank himself what the secret sauce is to that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dude is just going to five grams a gear a week. Now I got all yeah, the information for free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, right. so what would like a re- what would like a normal cycle like when you were working with Hani, for example? You said that he didn't have you on a lot of gear. So, like, what would that look like? Uh, you know, but it's like you know, same thing. How it's most coach coaches do. You put one thing in, you take something out. You know, you don't just fucking keep adding shit. You know what I mean? Mm. That's what some people do. That's like fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't anything crazy. Like you know, test. Um, you know, you get so far. It was the first time I ever tried to train in my life. I I never did train until I was thirty. Um, whatever that show, my first show back was 33 or 34. I can't remember what it was. What age it was? 33? Something like that. First time I ever did train. And it wasn't very much. Um, you know, um, I'm trying to remember everything now. I got to roll down somewhere too because I didn't want to forget it. Yeah. But it was, like I said, it was nothing. Like I thought when I when I was working, I was like, oh, this is going to be like, same thing. It's going to be crazy. And he told me, I was like, I was like, that's it? That's everything? It was maybe a little bit more than I was used to because I didn't, I was obviously used to doing nothing. Yeah. And so it was like, you know, first time I tried to train, the first time I like, you know, uh, tried a little bit of growth or something, you know what I mean? And uh, like, you know, like four I use, first time I ever tried it or something like that. Um, just add those little things that I never tried before. And it made a, it made a difference. But like, the, I think what made more difference with everything work with Hani was that I had someone to answer to. So I couldn't fuck up on it. I had to do exactly what he said because every week I had to send him pictures. And I've never done that before either. I've never had a coach that really even looked at me or asked for pictures. So this was all new for me. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I can't fuck up. I can't go eat shit because he'll know. He'll know if we eat There's even times when I well, well, didn't do anything wrong. And I send him pictures. He's like, what the fuck are you doing over there? You look like fucking shit. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> right? But I think, I think, I don't know if this is how he is, but I think, uh, but I think back, I was like, I was trying so hard to impress him. I look, every time I send him pictures, like, oh, he, okay, he's gonna like these ones. I'm looking crazy, <clears throat> and he still wouldn't say any good. And I think he was he was doing that to like motivate me. I think, yeah. Yeah. because right before the show, the last check ins I sent her, like, he was like, we had a conversation about what to do, what to change, and then he goes, oh yeah, by the way, you're starting to look okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. I was like, fuck, I think I'm killing myself, man. <laughs> like it. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it was the first time I ever had to like really answer to someone, I guess. So it's a, it made me do everything the way I was broke down to do, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Would you yeah. say that uh, working with Hanny was your best coaching relationship? Like that was the best coach that you had? Well, he's pretty, he's pretty much the only coach I ever had. Yeah. I never really worked with anybody like else to, else to get out. Well, except one more, the other one. Yeah. But it's, um, it's funny too, right? Because there's so many more coaches now, and I think a lot of guys are more into the coach hopping thing nowadays. So I'll talk to other pros, and they'll give me their opinions on the coaches that they worked with. And you know, there's there's like this divide. There's like the the Chris or the Hannies or the, these guys are like pretty moderate with their drug use. And then there's the other list of guys and it's like oh these these are the guys that use a lot of stuff these are the guys that don't use that much stuff which which one do you want do you want the one that's going to push you it's like oh i can decide what i want to do do i want to abuse it i'm going to pick this guy do i want to take it conservative i'm going to go hire a chris Decito kind of a thing right it's like yeah and you it's, know. it's funny to me that pros even like rely so much on these coaches for like drug protocols where it's like i don't really know if that's what matters that that's matters. what i mean it's like yeah. How, how do you have top Olympians working with coaches that are super moderate, low dose versus super high, crazy dose, everything in between. It's like you, you just decide what's going to work best for you. Yeah. If someone tells me, okay, I want you to take three grams. That's not the fucking secret. I'm going to do that. I'm going to feel like Frank felt. I'm going to then end up going back down anyways. We're right back to square one. So mm-hmm. at the yeah. end of the day, I completely agree. Like that's, that's not the thing that's going to get you there. But having a great coach has so many other benefits besides just the diet and the protocol. Like it's a relationship. It's having someone accountable to you. It's so having someone that you can talk to bounce answers off of, keep your head on straight, motivate you like all these things. Like it's a relationship. It's a team that you're building essentially, not just someone that's like, Hey coach, where's my drug protocol? It's like, that's, <laughs> Yeah. You could just get chat GPT to do that. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm, I'm hiring a coach for exactly the accountability that the eye that that coach has to like yeah. bring in, right. To learn my body, to make the calls and diet. And 
and really probably the peak week more than anything. Yeah. Like I, I know for, I know for sure I can get myself the three weeks out. I know I can't like, you know what I mean? But the only reason why I don't get myself the three weeks out and then hire a coach to peak me is because obviously as a coach myself, I know that a coach needs time to learn my body to be able to peak me correctly. That's why I want someone there with me the, the whole ride. You know what I mean? So well, you know, for me too, I think, I think I, I know you guys probably uh, agree with me. There are times in your diet when you're not going to feel good. You're going to feel like you're going to look like shit. All this kind of stuff's going to happen sometimes, right? And the problem is if you're not, if, if you don't have a coach, sometimes like, I don't know if you guys have done it. Oh, I feel like shit. I need to go eat more food. I need to do this. I need that. But at yeah. the end of the day, you got to realize something. That's it's part of it. You got to look like shit that day. You got to be flat. You got to be this. And when you're flat, you're not going to look as lean. Oh my, oh, there's no veins today. Well, fuck it. This is not working. I'm paying this guy. And I feel like shit. And that might last for weeks. But that's a process of getting in shape. You know what I mean? People don't oh, do that. So true. it's like, yeah. just someone like that knows, like, hey, man, guess what? Or just say, you're not going to feel good this week. So just be ready for it. So yeah, yeah I, that's one thing. I, you want to panic. Yeah. I deal with that with clients all the time in prep. Like, you know, you get people seven, eight weeks out. Oh, like, I think I look like shit. Like, I'm skinny and like, I'm fat. And I'm like, yeah, you're in the flat, but still fat stage. Like, welcome to fucking contest prep. Like, we're not trying to look at eight weeks out. We're trying to look at it on the day of the show. So th this is how it goes. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you do enough shows, you learn that, right? Like, we understand that, obviously, as bodybuilders. Even, even now, I'm starting to learn that because I'm like, because I haven't done so long. But, like, I'm just, I'm trying to get, like, I'm not trying. I'm working to get in better shape right now. And I know that I started it. I was like, man, I'm fucking trying so hard and I look like shit. And I was like, Frank, it's not going to happen. Like, you, you got to give it time to work. It's got to, like, yeah, you know what I mean? So consistent yeah. for a couple months and then you'll fucking start seeing some shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, you know what's cool, too, is, like, man, like, back in the day, like the 2013, 2012, like when there was like the Fuads and like the Ben Pakalskis and all these other Canadian guys like running around, like training, competing at the Olympia, like none of these guys offered coaching. So if you wanted to like talk to any of these guys, ask them any questions, good luck, man. Like it just wasn't going to happen. Like trying to, mm -hmm. trying to talk to Fuad, trying to talk to Ben when they were in their heyday competing, it was like, they didn't even see you, man. You know what I mean? So I feel like it's pretty cool. Like, if, if I was a kid right now, and I'm like, man, look at all these Canadian pros. I can hire any of them to be my mentor, to be my guide, to help me get there. And they're all basically affordable, right? Mm -hmm. They're all accessible. I can just DM them. They're probably going to respond. We didn't have any of that. Remember, like, like, basically idolizing Frank, idolizing all these guys, seeing them in person, seeing one guy. And, like, I remember talking to him one time asking him a question and he was just like so annoyed that i talked to him <laughs> you know and i was just like okay <laughs> you're like <laughs> yeah clearly no, like clearly happy, like man. that's that's not the move like you don't bother these guys but now yeah. now it's like we're kind of used to it like we expect people to kind of talk to us like well we, you know what Th things have changed in a way too is that now yeah because, because I think of social media too, you got to get people to like you besides just being a good bodybuilder. Because if they don't like you a lot, you won't, you know, they won't use your code. They won't buy anything from you. They won't do this. If they don't like you, you could still be, you could still be really good and people could hate you. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. now there's more to it now. More, you can't just like hide, well, unless you want to be like, unless you're like, the only thing you want to do is just be the best bodybuilder. You don't care about social media. Yeah. You can go somewhere, hide in a hole somewhere and fucking be the best and train like that. But for most of us, like, there's so much opportunity to make like promote your training, uh, work with supplement companies, work with clothing companies, whatever to to make be a bodybuilder, right? Um, so I mean, there's so, the people to that now are so lucky. There's so it's so much easier to be a bodybuilder now. There's so much opportunity like now. It's crazy. So you can't do that. Like so, I think now people have to be a bit more friendly. They have to be a bit more open to talking to people because you get a bad reputation. It's uh it's not good because I know there's people that were like very high up there and people didn't like them. And I'm like, that's not good. So what are you gonna so when you retire and you still wanna like I actually know I can see people I know what they were like when they're competing and what they're like now. They're two different people right now. Yeah. Like they're like, oh Mr. Nice Guy now, help everybody. I'm like, yeah. they know now they gotta be nice. You know what I mean? Like there's like, oh shit, I can't be an asshole. You know what I mean? I kind of for me, I kind of feel like I just fuck it. This is me, man. Yeah, you know what I mean. Stay the fuck safe. But you say, I know what you mean though. Now there's so many opportunities to like, you can get anybody, you can coach anybody, whatever. But like, um, I think now you got more people can make it. It's easier to make it because, like I said, resources are better. 
but I don't know. Like you said, I don't like you said. People don't want it for the same reasons as before. So yeah, it's different. It's changed. Yeah. Now it's like, like oh, I just I want this for a job. They want it for a job. That's what they want. Yeah. I wanted to ask you one more thing about um, when you were with Animal. Is there one moment in your prime with Animal that stood out the most to you? Like, for example, was it recording the DVDs or was it like doing like a certain photo shoot or was there like an event that really sticks in your mind is like that was fucking such a cool time? I mean, there, there's so many, dude. Um, God, there's way too many to even remember. But like, I remember one cool thing was like, I, not just because it's someone famous, but like I met Arnold Schwarzenegger for the first time. And obviously, it was, it was all this because of Animal. I wouldn't have been there if I wasn't with Animal and stuff like that. But you know, it's at the Arnold Classic, and um, he does. You know, he goes around talking to all the. You know, not everybody. But he stops at certain booths, right? This year, they come up. They let you know when he's coming. They're like he's gonna stop here at in five minutes, so you guys better be ready. And I was like, okay, fuck it. This year, I am fucking getting a picture right next to him. I don't give a shit. I'll push anybody out of kids, children, women. <laughs> get out of my way. <laughs> um so anyway he came up and uh I just i was right up right ready right, right they put a red carpet down and everything like he's going through and uh, i was right there you know yeah. uh i don't i'm not i'm not i'm not like a star truck kind of guy but it's fucking arnold you know what i mean like, yeah 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 fuck, right. come on um yeah. so he came on to he took a picture he stood right next to me i found my instagram somewhere um and um everybody was like saying oh sh- flex your form show me your form and like you know and then he was like what's everybody talking about he, everyone was saying it. I was like, they want me to flex my forearm for you. He was like, well, let's see. And I, when they were saying that, I knew I was I was purposely getting it ready. I knew how to get like some extra blood in there. I was just like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I was pissed off was like, I wish I had like been through a workout and showed like when it, when it's pumped up, it's like way crazier. Right? You gotta like, have those grippers in your pocket. You just start yeah. squeezing them. <laughs> your so hands in your but pocket. I was, <laughs> but I did. I was in decent. I was in decent shape too, so I knew I could get it pretty veiny, like just by squeezing my hand, right? So I heard people saying that. I was like, oh, fuck, I better get it ready, right? So he's like, okay. I was like, okay. And I did the, like the fucking like hardest fucking flex you've ever heard and seen in your life. Just, geez. <laughs> and uh, he was like, he said that he said, he was like, he freaked out a little bit. He goes, I've never seen anything that like that before in my life. And I'm like, Arnold, now he's seen everything. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, I was just like, I, I was like, when he left, oh, actually, no, he, he, he came up to me and said that. His son came up and looked at me. And the other guy from uh, the movie 300, the big bodybuilder guy, what's his name? Do you guys remember his name? Gerard Butler? No, no, from the uh, from Gladiator, the big guy. Oh, oh, oh. He was an actual bodybuilder years ago. I forget his name. He's a big dude, like real big dude. From the movie he Gladiator? Cha- yeah, he's chained. He gets chained with Russell Crowe together. They get chained, chained together. In a oh, shit. Unit. Yeah, I remember that. That big guy, right? And he, he was there too. He cut me to his like, oh, he's like, holy. And I was like, when they left, I was like, oh, I can die now. Fucking yeah, done. Yeah. I've done it. I've done it. Yeah. Um. Awesome. Maybe I think I don't do it. I met Joe Weider, too. That was pretty cool. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah and he I and he, I I was actually at his headquarters, like uh, the Weider office, and uh, I was three weeks out from the show, and he wanted me to pose. I went to his office, and he was talking to me. So he's like, the way he, you know how Joe Weider sounds. And I was like, holy fuck, like, dude, this is insane. Like, he said that exact same fucking thing to Arnold before. Like, he's like, you know, okay, do front double. And he's like, move your arms like, he said, help me, put your arms like this. And I'm like, holy, fuck, this is nuts. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And, you know what he did tell me, though? Because we went there because he was, I was, they were wanting maybe shoot me for um, muscle fitness or whatever it was. Whatever, I can't think of the 20 head. Yeah, whatever it was. He goes, you're too vascular. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, man. that's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, one more question. Um, your current like protocol? Are you just doing a TRT? Do you take anything else? Peptides? Um, what are you doing do... like, for your like TRT health program now? My test is not very high. Like I'm doing, I'm probably doing more than TRT, but nothing that's like a, you know, considered like a, sports, a clinical sports thing. TRT. Yeah, so yeah, let's say I'm yeah, sports theater above theater. the above the average man. Let's say yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, High, you know, high performing man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sometimes I sometimes I only throw in like a little bit of Masteron in there, um, and besides that, I only do like the um, same as you guys, the BioLab um, growth hormone. I start doing, 
and just like the TB500 and the um, PPC15. And that's the only stuff I'm taking right now. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Awesome. No, that's good stuff. Um, anything else that we want to touch on? I don't know. Good. What's uh what's next for you, Frank? Um, anything new with Wrath with the supplement company? Flag we have field? um uh, man, well, like I said, next we're going to Tampa next week. Me and Morgan and Antoine. Ooh, nice. For uh, we're going for like a it was a gym opening, right? I don't anniversary for a gym, right? When your anniversary for his uh, muscle man was it muscle? A muscle asylum. Muscle asylum, yeah. We're going to. Um, we're going to. It's going to be. I think it's in Siesta Key where we're going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I got that the weekend after that. I'm going to uh, uh, Reno. We got a booth for um, Wrath at the show there at the expo. It's gonna be a big one for us. Um, oh, is that the, Le that, the Legion show? Yeah, the Legion. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, a good show. Yeah. yeah. And uh, after that, not sure. We'll see what happens after that. Just uh, are you going to the Olympia? I don't know. You don't know. We won't, I won't be going if I'm not going for like um. Like any sponsors or anything like that, I don't know if I'll be going because I don't. Rath's not. Rath is not going. Um, but I don't think my is like maybe I'll just go with if it, if any of you guys are going. If yeah. anybody's going just to hang out, I might go. But besides right now, Robert, um, no. Oh, I thought you were going. No, no. I mean, we're in the middle of a move now. Um, Did you find a place? She's moving. Yeah, she's packing right now. I'm gonna help her pack since I get off. No, we did find a place actually. Same building. Oh, nice. But we're getting an upgrade, oh, so we're getting a bigger place. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. So yeah, actually, you... I'm actually not moving too. Oh, you're moving too. There you go. Yeah, the, yeah. Because place I'm at now, like I just I'm only renting this place, and uh, they are selling it, so they want to put it back on the market. They don't want they want it to be empty when they're selling it. Oh. So yeah, no big deal. But I it's just like a pain in the ass, right? When do you got to yeah, be out? It by? Is. I know. Uh, there's not like a real a real date, but like. They want me out as soon as possible, right? So they can sell it, right? And they're they're very they're very nice about it and stuff like that. And they're actually gonna pay me some money to leave early. Oh, um, yeah, it's whatever, it's no big deal. But it's like uh, I, I actually per legally don't have to leave if I don't want to. Yeah. But I mean, I don't want to be a dick eater to people. They've been good to me, like they haven't done anything wrong. They just want to sell their place, right? So. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah, but I it's mean, still uh, still pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like. Ooh, moving is such a pain in the ass, but uh, I mean, at least I got the easiest move. It's literally just downstairs. You know yeah. what? I was trying. I was trying to do that too. I was trying to find a, a place in my own building too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was nothing. Yeah. Oh, shit. Come over to Brock here. Avenue. Yeah. Come over here, Frank. Come down by the water. It's peaceful down here. Yeah, yeah. I, I do. I, I think I probably look like a place down there. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's some. There's some new condos. There's there's brand new condos that are opening up. A whole yeah, bunch yeah. of them. Yeah, we looked. Yeah. We looked at them. They're nice. Yeah. Um, but too small for like two of us. And if we want to get a bigger place, it's kind of expensive. Yeah. You know what things I don't I'm at a point now, I don't know, I don't want to buy a place right now because um I don't know where we want to live like for good. Like if I don't I don't know if I want to stay here, don't want to move to the states, where I want to be. So it's like why I, I don't know where I want to stay, right? Yeah. So I know I feel the same way. Like I have no interest in buying anything. Like I like I like renting, I like being able to move around because like you just don't know what's gonna happen and you know, yeah. when you buy something, especially around here, like that's a pretty big liability that you carry now. Like, you know, so being, a bodybuilder, there, like... being a bodybuilder, your job is wherever you go. Yeah. So yeah. it's easier for us to move. So it's like, you don't want to be here no more. It's like a lot of people stay where they, where they work, right? Yeah. Like you, you lived, you lived in Newfoundland too, and you moved here. It didn't make it, it didn't probably make more money up here probably, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. So yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like it's, it's easier to move that way, but um, yeah, man, it's, I hate moving. It's like trying, the only thing is like, I don't want to, same as Rob, I don't want to pay a million dollars for a fucking place. Like, fuck, man, it's expensive around here too, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, just finding a place that I like feel comfortable at, and like, you know, I went to a couple places. I'm like, eh, nah, that's not for me. So I, I don't. Plus, if you're gonna be there for a while, I, I gotta like it. So I don't want to, you know, different. When I was younger, I lived in basement apartments and fucking dumps and yeah. Do I? I used to live on top of a pizza place. Morgan knows it. Hobo's Pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I used to live. On, I used to live on top of that place, man. Like. I've my girl, my girlfriend, my girlfriend, before we moved here, um, because we had we had we had lived together for a while, and then we separated for a bit. She got her own place, and we got back together. And her her new place that she got, her little apartment, was above a pizza place, like in the fucking hood in St. John's, Newfoundland. Yeah, like, really. I would go over there to hang out with her, and one day I go over there, and there's a corner store like right next to her, her place, 
and there's like two two people running out with like a bunch of stuff and like the owners chasing them out, like chasing them being like you little fuckers like i'm calling the yeah. cops and oh, i was like oh man. yeah and then always smelled so damn good in that apartment though <laughs> dude it was hot, hot though in the summer bro hot oh, buddy my yeah. my bedroom was right over the oven Oh, buddy, yeah. You're, You're just be- cooking, just cooking yeah. all night. Golden in but the I winter, because you can save money on bills in the winter. Yeah. Dude, I used to get pizza delivered. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, man. Listen, listen, okay, I don't want to keep you guys too long, but listen. Obviously, because I lived there with, um, it was a three-bedroom apartment. We had four people living there. They were all, uh, two of the guys were in the Army. Another guy was going, to, I was going to university. This other guy was going to, well, we're all going to university, right? That's why we're there. But two of them were in the Army. Um, and this one guy, he all we did was we pushed the couch back away from the wall and he hung up a blanket. So half of the living room was another bedroom and he lived behind the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he didn't, give, he didn't give a shit, man. He's in there. We're on the couch watching this TV. He's back there banging some chick. Oh my God. <laughs> and, all he ate, all, and all he ate was pizza. <laughs> That's all you need. All you need, yeah. Pizza, pizza boxes. Pizza board. boxes were to the ceiling. I'm not fucking joking. Like I'm not like right to the ceiling. What kind of broads was this guy banging behind a couch? He was ripped up. He was ripped. Was he ripped up? Oh, he was like 120 shredded. That's <laughs> that's all you need, man. <laughs> it didn't it didn't work. Listen, I was smoke some pizza and beer and it's shredded. What is one of those guys? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, if you had abs back in those days, it'd get you pretty far. Well, uh, back in those days, I was like 260 walking around in St. John's. So, you, just, you know what that's like. You know what that's like. <laughs> do I ever? Do I ever get you? Oh, in, I was, get you in trouble? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's got a buddy one. like everybody's got a buddy like that though. I I knew a buddy, and he worked on a potato farm, and he would just smoke and drink and eat potatoes. Like <laughs> he just had like a bag of potatoes. He, he lived in a motel. First of all, he's in a motel, and he would just take a raw potato and just like eat it. And he'd be like, yeah, like, that's just how he did. I was like, what the hell? Jesus Christ. Just enough to get by. Like I said, if this is just a vessel, man. Yeah. yeah. Treat, treat it like shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Five words um, from Frank McGrath to finish out the podcast. Yeah, 100%. Awesome. Make sure you guys go check out Wrath Supplements. It's good shit. Yeah. Uh, flag nor fail. What else you got, Frank? Who else are you affiliated with? Um... Yeah, oh, trick to IFVMA for videos there. Oh, yeah, those, those got some good shit going on there, man. Stuff you won't get anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, IBA, IBBMA don't give a fuck. No, <laughs> yeah. that's the one thing I say is good about the way the world is now. You can say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, it, it is great. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, uncensored content on IBBMA. Yeah, uh, but yeah, thanks a lot for coming on, Frank. Man, we really appreciate it. No problem, it. guys. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you. All right, we'll see you at the gym. Yep. All right, later. Later, guys.